yeah, once a week, just once a week, I got, I have to hit the reset button with my legs where I just go three miles, nine minute pace. It feels so good. All right, a little bit of cross training today. That's right. Time to start cleaning up that yard. Oh man, it's slowly, slowly warming up. So much for cross training. I got a lot of help today. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. All right, about 25% done with the raking and the cross training out there. One step at a time, right? It's been a long winter. It actually, December and January was really nice, but February and March here in Colorado was a little crazy, quite a bit of snow, which is good for the mountains, good for the farmers out there, but it meant that I needed to sit on these Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro shoes for basically the last two months. That's right, upper right hand corner, you can see me uh, opening up this three ounce shoe. That's right, a three ounce shoe. I'm very excited, but I did not want to take these shoes out in the snow, in the grime of the winter, and so I've just been sitting and waiting on them. But sure enough, this upcoming week in Denver, no snow in the forecast. It's supposed to be 70 degrees on Tuesday. So my next critical workout for the marathon preparation is a six mile threshold run on Tuesday. So come back Wednesday of this week for my first impression of the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast Pro. I know there's been, I've probably, I don't know, count, you know, I don't want to say countless comments, but probably two or three emails I've received from people, you know, yeah, around the world asking like, Seth, when are you going to take this shoe out for its first impression run? So again, come back Wednesday afternoon for my first impression of this guy. All right, going in for dinner and then we're going to come back out. I've, I have an important question to ask all of you. I need some help, need some advice. All right, come on. So usually on Sundays, we do like a nice steak dinner as a family on Sunday afternoons, but we have a ton of leftovers, incredible leftovers. And did you see yesterday's vlog all about eating and what I'm eating in my marathon training? If you haven't seen it, it's another one you can go check out, upper right hand corner. And so anyway, here I am sitting on my throne eating some leftovers. Uh, we got chicken curry, spaghetti, chips and salsa. I love chips and salsa. It's one of my favorite snacks of all time. <laughs> and we are taking it a little easier today, just in catch-up mode on a fine Sunday. And if you're watching this vlog on the day it published, Monday, March 25th, make sure you mark your calendar tonight. Monday night, March 25th at 6 p.m. Mountain Time. I'm going to be interviewing my former teammate from the University of Colorado uh, live here on this channel. So come back 6 p.m. tonight. Let's just say he was a sub 15-minute 5K guy in high school, so very fast. So all the high schoolers out there, make sure you tell all your running buddies. And let, listen, this guy, he knows what he's doing when it comes to training and racing fast. And now, as a professional athlete, he's doing trail racing, marathon racing, and he runs for or Nike. So again, that's 6 p.m. tonight. And one last point, I ran in some Solomon socks today. I will get you my first impressions on what's going on with these Solomon socks very soon. All right, and moving on to today's topic where, yes, I need your help. I need your wisdom. I need your insights and your advice. Here we go. I'm wearing this shirt on purpose. It's the Dirty 30 50K shirt. Not sure if you can see that from last year where I fell. It was a 50K up here in the Rocky Mountains. And basically, uh, <laughs> From what I understand, there's a big difference between a marathon aid station on the roads and a ultra marathon aid station on the trails in the mountains. 
Basically, when you uh, when you arrive at an aid station in an ultra marathon, uh, you are there to refuel. Sometimes to say a quick hello to the uh, volunteers to say thank you for being out there in the middle of the woods. I I often will grab like a little uh, slice of a PB and J. I love PB and Js. Maybe a handful of peanut M and Ms, and then a gel, and then a Gatorade or a Tailwind or whatever, and then a gulp of water, and then you're gone. But an aid station in an ultra marathon usually takes at least 20 to 45 seconds I would say like that's a very rough uh, rough estimate for a, let's say a 50k as the distance goes up you'll spend a much more time like for a hundred mile race I've spent as much as five to ten minutes at an aid station so you don't really do that in a marathon on the roads right you don't do that at all Here's my predicament. Uh, the reason I was interested, I don't know if I ever explained this to you, the reason I was so interested in the Grandma's Marathon in Duluth, Minnesota in June is because I was trying to get into the elite field. Why did I want to get into the elite field? Not to call myself an elite runner. Simply because if I would have qualified as an elite uh, athlete on that particular day, I could have basically uh, given the uh, volunteers uh, like six water bottles to be placed along the course on tables with my own uh, preferred drink mix, whether it was going to be Yukan or Tailwind or just straight up Gatorade, whatever the case may be. So I wanted to basically have my own little teeny tiny water bottles that were easy to drink and um, and place them along the way on tables. So that's why I was so interested in the elite field to have the proper fuel and hydration along the way. But now, but I didn't, I wasn't accepted as an elite athlete. So I said, okay, we're going, we're going to plan B. We're going to do Cleveland. So Cleveland is in, is in May. And based on the research I've done, uh, they don't have that option for elite athletes. I've reached out to them. I haven't heard back. If anybody has any connections to the Cleveland Marathon, let me know. Email me and say, and just let me know, like, is there an option to give water bottles uh, along the course? I don't think there that is an option, and that's okay with me. But because of that, uh, I've done some re research, and you all have helped me as well. Here's what I have discovered. The Cleveland Marathon at the aid stations along the way is going to have Powerade, uh, the Powerade drink in Berry Blast is going to be the, f the flavor. And so here is my tip of the day. If you have a peak race coming up, make sure you research ahead of time what the fueling options are going to be at the aid stations, especially for anything above half marathon. It's also important for a 10K, definitely not as important for a 5K, but like half marathon, marathon, really critical to basically know like, okay, are, are, what types of gels are they gonna have? And they're gonna have honey stingers in Cleveland. So what am I gonna do uh, tomorrow, Monday? I'm gonna go to the grocery store and I'm gonna try and purchase some Berry Blast Powerade. And guess what else I'm going to do? I'm going to go buy cups and because guess what? If they don't have water bottles, uh, the water bottle option, that's okay. I'm going to basically over the next eight weeks, and I know this is getting like really down to detail, but I'm going to, I'm going to practice drinking with cups in my, in my, uh, in my, uh, workouts in the next eight weeks with Berry Blast Powerade, just so I can get used to running fast through the aid stations, hopefully at at, at the very least 520 pace like that's going pretty quick so I need to be able to grab a cup put it back and make sure I get it in me and that's another I'll just say another tip of the day it's way more important for you to get the nutrient the water into you rather than on you that was something that Mark Wetmore always told us in our long runs like yeah when you're hot you want to dump water on you that's fine but like what's the most important is get water in you that's what's going to make the big difference so I'm okay to slow my pace down a little bit at Cleveland in order to get what I need into me and one last point, so this is my raid light vest, it's very heavy, but Ultimate Direction has come out with a marathoning vest, very lightweight, it looks very streamlined. I do not want to carry a vest in my fast marathon, like I'm not gonna do that, I don't wanna do that. And so I would really appreciate any wisdom, and yes, that is the keyword of the day, wisdom that you could share with me about basically drinking and eating throughout a marathon knowing that I'm going to be running 
at 520 and below pace. Like that's the goal. That's what I'm shooting for. So going through those aid stations, <laughs> I just, I, I just don't, I've never, I've never done this before. And that question of the day, and this is where all the veteran racers out there can really help this YouTube family. Question of the day. What is the number one question you have for all of us about the in-race experience? Whether it's fueling, whether it's racing tactics, whether it's drafting, whether it's uh, getting off the starting line, whether it's closing out a race, whether it's dealing with the crowds of a big of a big city marathon, whether it's what whether it's dealing with heat, whatever the case may be, what is your number one question you have about the actual in-race experience? My number one question is how do I get through the aid stations efficiently? Efficiently efficiently. That's all I want to do and make sure I get the right fuel in me. All right, that is today's vlog. Thank you for helping everybody down in the comments. I appreciate it and bada bing, <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. It's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. So I just, anyway, seek beauty, work hard and love each other. Oh, remember how sometimes when it's really hot, they have sponges of water? That's interesting. I wonder, like, who knows? Who knows? Like, where you just get a sponge and you just, like, squeeze it. Sometimes you can even drink out of it. Oh, I don't know. Let us know your insights. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thank you ahead of time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See you tomorrow.